Arizona Speedway, are we ready to rock and roll? Zeb Wise and the Macho Man. Santan Ford Pace Truck to the infield. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time to get dirty. Night number two of the Western World with an Oss Energy Drink. USAC National Western Midgets. Wise and Bacon will set the pace of the Oss Star Can. Green flag in the air. Let's do it. And it's going to be Zeb Wise leading the field into turn at number one as Kevin or as Brady Bacon to the outside. He's going to try to wrestle that race lead away, and he'll do just that with the 67 Logan Seavey in pursuit of him. Off of turn number four, it will be Bacon leading lap number one, followed by Seavey. When the big money's on the line, Bacon goes to the front. Macho Man leads lap number one. Seavey high flying up there as well. Three wide for a moment. Coming off turn number two, here comes Sunshine to the inside of Zeb Wise. He'll move by his teammate to take over third momentarily. Yeah, Tyler Corder takes over that third spot. Zeb Wise goes up to the top side of the racetrack. Sunshine going to slam the door hard on his teammate in the 39 BC, but Wise fighting back on the inside. Almost went three wide there for a brief moment. They're still duking out for that third spot with Sunshine leading Wise into three. Jesse Caldwell and the uh, five car, Kevin Thomas Jr. going at it as KTJ trying to hold him off as they go side by side down the front straightaway. That is for the sixth spot. Now Kevin Thomas Jr. gets in front of the IWX 71, and he gets right back to the inside. Yeah, good crossover move right there by Jesse Caldwell, taking over that fifth spot once again as Kevin Thomas Jr. up on the berm, trying to get some goodie down on the bottom side of the racetrack on a catfish down there, throw a slide job on Caldwell. He's going to slip up. Here comes Caldwell right back, and looks like KTJ might lose another one here to Klausmeyer. Yeah, Tucker Klausmeyer trying to get to the inside. Three wide for a moment as Kevin Thomas Jr. throws a slider again on Caldwell, who crosses over right back underneath him. So it's Jesse Caldwell, Kevin Thomas Jr. That is, again, the battle for fifth. Toss Klausmeyer in there again. Three wide coming off turn two. Three wide down the back straight away to turn number three. Kevin Thomas Jr. trying to break away from the two teammates here of Caldwell and a Klossmeyer. He will finally do just that as Brady Bacon continues to lead Logan Seavey, Tyler Courtney, and right now in fourth is Zeb Wise. Only four tenths of a second goes Logan Seavey behind your leader, Brady Bacon, who has led from the drop of the green flag this time by. It is over half a second. Bacon trying to gain on the 67. Meanwhile, here comes Sunshine. Tyler Courtney there in the 7BC right on the back bumper of Seavey as they race back in turn number three. It'll be 22 laps to go this time by. Logan Seavey run a little bit of a higher line than Brady Bacon, trying to find some momentum off a turn at number four. Now he's going to drop the nose down to the inside of Brady Bacon, trying to pull up side by side. Can't quite do it. Still about three car lengths off the pace behind your race leader as it's Bacon using that middle line. CB right back up to the top. Logan Seavey closing in on Brady Bacon again as they cross the stripe down to two tenths. Now right to the inside part of the racetrack, trying to find grip through the middle. And Logan Seavey with a nice run coming on turn two. Will he have some for Bacon? They both go top shelf in turns three and four. Logan Seavey diving off turns one and two. Both drivers went top shelf through turns three and four, and he is half a car length behind him as he goes into turn one, going to try to throw the slide job on him. Can't quite do it. Brady Bacon going to hang on to it off of turn number two. Yeah, Logan Seavey gave it a shot there, and we'll have to regroup, try and run back down the 76 E car as Macho Man continues out in front. It'll be 19 to go this time by. There's a look at your top four as they cross the stripe. Zeb Wise slowly reeling in his teammate, Tyler Courtney, as Courtney now with a nice run through turns one and two and been looking pretty good up on top running the cushion. Yeah, now all these drivers are going to run the cushion through turns three and four. Kevin Thomas Jr. still back there in the fifth spot as Zeb Wise doing what he did last night. That's creeping closer and closer to the front as Tyler Courtney now tries to throw the slide job by Logan Seavey. Can't quite make it work. Seavey hangs on to second. Yeah, will that allow Zeb Wise to reel in the 7BC? Doesn't look like he's going to be able to capitalize. Meanwhile, up front, here we go once again. Brady Bacon and Logan Seavey. Seavey reeling him back in after he made a move on him a few laps ago in turns one and two. Bacon bounces off the cushion. That propels him about five car lengths in front of Seavey. And Logan Seavey right now trying to hold out Sunshine, who drops the nose down to the inside through turns three and four. Pulls up side by side with Seavey. Now it's going to be Zeb Wise to the outside of Courtney. Moves Zeb Wise into that third spot. Slicing and dicing here at Arizona Speedway. We will be halfway next time by. It'll be 15 laps to go. There's a look at the top three. Brady Bacon out front as we have action over in turns one and two. One car upside down. It's Jesse Colwell as he gets upside down as the red lights come on. Trying to take home a midget win as well. Green flag comes out. We're back underway. And Brady Bacon going to lead the charge as they all assault the cushion through turns one and two outside of the 84 as yellow flag will fly once again. Looks like a red flag now. Three cars involved. So here we go. 16 laps to go. Can anyone 
deal with Brady Bacon out in front. Green to the not start can back underway. Great start for Brady Bacon as he pulls away from Logan Seavey. Yeah, he pulls out about three car length advantage over Logan Seavey. Now make that five car lengths off of turn number two. A great run by Brady Bacon as Gio Selzy goes down to the bottom side of the racetrack trying to work his way up onto the podium as Logan Seavey now has that second spot. Zeb Wise in third, but here comes Selzy. Yeah, Gio Selzy trying to bring Jerry Coons with him. Ms. Coons loves running the bottom these days, and he knows how to do it just as good, if not better, than anyone. And it looks like Brady Bacon, who is up on top, still out front. Logan Seavey slowly reeling him in. A long green flag run seems to be like that 67 gets oh! better. Big trouble on the front straightaway. Looks like the one TMC entry of Carson Elledge. Up and over here. Red lights are on once again. And Macho Man on the gas of the not start can back underway once again. 14 to go here in the midgets. And another great restart from Brady Bacon, who jumps out to him. About a four-car length advantage over Logan Seavey. Smacked the cushion off a of turn number two, but that actually propelled him just a little bit more. As it's going to be him and Seavey, your top two drivers, running the top shelf off a of turn number four. Brady Bacon continues to hang on. About two car lengths. Zeb Weiss trying to hold off. Whole gaggle of cars. Here comes Kevin Thomas, Jr. Very close racing down in turn one. KTJ now bounces off the cushion. Just got by Gio Selzy. Tyler Courtney there. Here comes Chris Windham as well as they go to almost three wide down into turn number three. But Kevin Thomas Jr., full head of steam for sure, making moves here. Yeah, Gio Selzy trying to hold off the Claus and Marshall racing entries. Not in so much luck as it will be both Tyler Courtney and Chris Windham sneaking by him. Now on the outside trying to hold off the hard charge for one of the Keith Coons cars as out front Brady Bacon still leading Logan Seavey by three car lengths as they work their way into turn number one. Zeb Wise got a catfish around the bottom. Rico Abreu up into the eighth spot. The 97 is on the move. Keep an eye on high flying Rico Abreu, that number 97 car. As you see, Brady Bacon. And Logan Seavey still out front. Zeb Wise sits in third, but a gaggle of cars for fourth on back. Brady Bacon stretches it out just a little bit. That last lap over Logan Seavey has some issues. Get off a turn at number two. Zeb Wise in that third spot right now, but not for long as Kevin Thomas Jr. right now starting to work the outside of him as they come off a turn number four. It's Zeb Wise, KTJ, and Tyler Courtney running third through six. Rico Abreu trying to throw the slider on. Big Daddy not able to do it there. Coming off turn two, he'll lose some ground to the 17 BC. Meanwhile, there's a look at Kevin Thomas Jr. Sunshine Tyler Courtney right behind him. They are working up top. Zeb Wise down the gutter rat line, the 39 BC. Going low, he'll slide in front of KTJ. Kevin Thomas Jr. may have a shot at him here in turn three. Yeah, Zeb Wise slamming the door on Kevin Thomas Jr. Now going to go up to the top side of the racetrack as those leaders are starting to get smaller and smaller in his front windshield. As Kevin Thomas Jr. now trying to hold off Sunshine, who's going to drop the nose down low, throw the slide job on him. Can he make it stick? Nope. Here comes Kevin Thomas back with a crossover. Drag race. Give it to Sunshine. Great move by Tyler Courtney there as Kevin Thomas Jr. will close in right behind him, working the lip. It'll be uh, six laps to go this time by less than six go to go now for Brady Bacon. Logan Seavey, Zeb Wise, Tyler Courtney, Kevin Thomas Jr. Still your top five leaders working through turns. Three and four, there they are. Bacon out front of Logan Seavey. Five to go this time by. Enrico Abreu finally able to pass. Chris Wyndham with a slide job off a of turn at number two. Now has a sight set on Kevin Thomas Jr. as it's starting to heat up a little bit at the front. Logan Seavey reeling in. Brady Bacon big time going into the turn number three. They Logan Seavey bouncing off the cushion there off turn number four. Uh, as you said, drove it in deep in turn three right on the rear bumper. The race for the lead heating up. It'll be uh, less than four to go now. We'll see three to go next time by. Keep an eye on Abreu up to fifth. And Logan Seavey once again drives it in deep this time. Both drivers able to work it off a of turn number four. Bacon with a five-car length advantage over the 67 machine of Logan Seavey with less than three laps to go. Brady Bacon starting to stretch it out once again over the 67 of Seavey as Zeb Wise, a little issue, getting off a of turn number two. So far able to hang on to his advantage over Tyler Courtney. Two laps to go for Brady Bacon out in front, looking to win his fifth. Western World feature event here on Saturday night as Logan Seavey tries to close the gap in turns three and four. White flag is out, one lap to go. They both bang off the cushion down the front straight away back in one. One final time around as they come off a of turn number two. Logan Seavey gonna have one final shot down the back straightaway. Bacon stretches it out. Logan Seavey's gonna drive it in deep here into turn number three. But it's gonna be Brady Bacon picking up his fifth feature win in the Western World Championships. 
Macho Man getting it done here at Arizona Speedway. CV will end up second. Zeb Wise third. Tyler Courtney fourth. Rico Abreu from 19th will finish fifth. Kevin Thomas Jr., Chris Windham, Jerry Coons, Geo sells a Tanner Carrick. Your top 10. Standing up, ladies and gentlemen. He can't hear you. Brady Bacon, the Macho Man, wins here in the Western World. Let's get it down trackside to Georgia Henneberry. Brady Bacon getting it done. After a hard ran, 30 laps, he's going to take his helmet off and we will get a word around the front of the race car. Victory lane, Brady. It seemed like the key there was just to be smooth and consistent, but I'm sure there were a couple times there that made your eyes widen a little bit. Yeah, we biked up a couple times. That cushion was getting really big and that was so slick up to it, you could hit it really easy. But uh, And then I almost didn't catch the rubber there at the end. Uh, I moved down, I think, just in time. I don't know how close he was getting to me, but if he found it first, he was probably catching me pretty quick. So uh, guys gave me a good car. We made a last minute decision there in staging. I was checking everybody else's tires out and I'm like, yeah, I gotta make a change here. Uh, they didn't do quite as much track work as we were expecting. So, uh, you know, hopefully uh, this Western world's always been good to me, uh, several different racetracks. So uh, good to me again tonight, and hopefully we can get another one uh, in the sprint car. Finishing 10th last night. What did you take from last night to bring into tonight with the racetrack or with the car itself? Uh, starting in the front is pretty important. I mean, last night there just wasn't really much we could do. It was all around the bottom. Um, sprint car race, we, you know, made some moves at the very beginning, and Missed a wreck up there, but uh, a little. I think it was a little more racy tonight. Uh, cushions a little stronger, not quite all the way up to the fence. So, um, it's just the starting position is pretty important. There's so many good cars here. I mean, uh, these guys just don't make very many mistakes. Well, I've said this last night. I'm going to say it again. I'm going to ask the winner again. Are you going to get on this bowl behind you? Yes. Yeah, I'll get on it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Brady Bacon. Well, second place, Logan CV playing some mind games under that uh, red flag earlier on, but uh, second place there, man. Uh, it just seemed like you'd catch him, you'd catch him, then you'd hook the cushion and turn two. It just seemed really tricky up there, and then a lot of track condition changing going out there throughout that race. Uh, tell us about tell us about your race there, and uh, man, you were just so close to this one tonight. Yeah, we were we were right on him, you know, the whole race. It felt like, and I uh, could never really get some momentum going early with all those yellows. But uh, I was really happy with my race car. I was able to run through the middle early and you know stay with them. And then I knew when I needed to move up, uh, this thing was good on the cushion too. So, uh, like I said, I was just kind of searching every lap. I feel like I was trying something different to run them down. And at the end, I really found something. But it's just so hard to p pass when it, uh, you know rubber's on entry like that. It's just really really tough to clear a slider or you know anything like that I just need to get a really good run or he needed to make a mistake there so like I said I was able to find something that was good but uh, it's just really tough to pass in the rubber so uh, hopefully they work on this their straight track a little bit and we can put on a good show in the sprint car race yeah so speaking about that sprint car race obviously 30 laps right there in the midget is there anything that you could take from this race right now over to the sprint car obviously two different types of race cars but um, you know having more, more and more laps on this racetrack always helps um, yeah, obviously any laps help, but you know, like I said, hopefully they work on this racetrack and it's a completely different racetrack next time I can roll out here. So uh, we definitely don't want to run 30 laps in the rubber. So uh, hopefully they get this thing tuned up and you know work the top and bottom and give us a couple grooves to race on and, uh, and not take rubber so early like I did last night. So that's uh, not what the fans want to see and that's not what the drivers want. So hopefully, like I said, they'll do, do some work here and give us a racetrack. Valiant effort tonight for Logan Seavey, ladies and gentlemen. We'll send over to Georgia with third. Thank you, Chase. Here with third place finisher, Zeb Wise. Zeb, I really have to know why you chose to go to the bottom there for a little while. Uh, well, obviously it didn't really work out for me, but um, I saw Gio peeking down there. Uh, you know, he showed me his nose, and um, I didn't know if I should try something different. And, you know, I tried it and probably stayed down there for too long and kind of let these guys get away. But uh, not sure, you know, if I would have went up there and stayed with them if I would have been able to pass anybody. But these guys gave me a great race car again, and uh, two podiums and two nights is pretty cool. But uh, hopefully I can get them a win here in the uh, next few weeks. So I'm going to go let you get your top three picture. Great job tonight. Let's give a round of applause for your top three.